morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning Five here on Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by the People's Champ, Matt Baxendale. Bax, what is better about this 2019 Ohio State team than you expected? Uh, everything, though. I have to admit, when you say what is better, it made me immediately flash back to Conan the Barbarian with Arnold Schwarzenegger, where he was like, the, the cries of your enemies and the lamentations of the women. So maybe the best part about this season is the Michigan fans' lamentation so far. But I'm getting off topic. Uh, <laughs> I think the uh, I think the best thing about this that 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 this season so far, in terms of just how much better they are than we expected this early. Like everybody who knew anything about college football should have known full well that Ohio State was likely to win at least ten games this year, right? Just because Urban Meyer is not the coach doesn't mean that the talent isn't here. Right, but I don't think everybody expected how well prepared this team was right out of the gates. Like, if this is the new standard of of the way these guys are going to be ready to go at the start of the year, at the start of games, then that's a change from what we've seen in the past, and that's particularly notable in the case of Justin Fields. I think all of us thought he was going to be excellent by November or the end of the year, and next year he was going to start the year like a house of fire and be a Heisman candidate. Uh -uh. This year, he's just came out and firebombed everyone from the start. He's been one of three or four quarterbacks that have absolutely torched college football so far. And just they're ahead of pace. That's the biggest surprise to me, how much better they are. Is Their pace of when I thought they would hit elite started way earlier. Yeah, I was wondering if your answer to the question was going to be everything. I'm with you. I mean, like, I expected certain areas to be really good. Even the areas I expected to be really good are even better than I thought. Like, Chase Young's an example. I thought he was going to be great. He's better than great. I thought Okuda was going to be great. He's better than great. And just, you know, I thought Jeff Halfley was a home run hire. I was wrong. He was. He's a grand slam home run hire down three in the ninth inning with two outs. I mean, this guy... We're going to talk more about Jeff Halfley later in the show, so I don't want to. I don't want to talk too much about him right now. But uh, yeah, I man, I'm with you. It's just there's so much positive about this team, and you know, I just can't say enough nice things. Um, I just hope they're not reading the press clippings because one thing I think they've done a great job of is they've stayed focused. They're a hungry team. Nebraska talked about this afterwards of how hungry Ohio State team, how this Ohio State team is, how much they wanted it. I loved listening to some of the Nebraska players just basically gush about Ohio State, um, even though those Nebraska players were downtrodden after the, the game. They were still gushing about Ohio State. But this week against Michigan State, uh, Buckeyes are favored by three touchdowns, as you know, backs. Um, any concerns about this this game this weekend, night game, Ohio State, Michigan State, 7.30 at the Horseshoe? Well, all the old-timers are going to tell me, you know, well, Michigan State in 1998 was a team that had no business beating the Buckeyes. And they did. Even though they were down 15, they did. Right? And there's certain people who they hear the words Michigan State and like a shiver goes through them. I'm not one of them. Um, I watched this Sparty team almost every game this year because I didn't think their preseason hype matched their actuality on the football field. I think I was saying before the season seven and five or eight and four is the best I could see them being. I didn't see them being a top 20 team. And to tell you the truth, they're a team that has a pretty good defense. It'll be the best defense OSU's played so far, which doesn't say a lot though. I'll be real honest. Uh, I mean, Cincinnati had a pretty decent defense in high state credit that too, but their offense is, Thoroughly unimpressive. There could be – you couldn't have less creativity in it. Brian Lewerke is not a good quarterback, who everybody every year seems to try to convince himself so he's the next Kirk Cousins, and he's just not that good. I'm not surprised Ohio State is a gigantic favorite over Michigan State. Remember, this is the same Sparty team that uh, – it was 3 to nothing Arizona State with five minutes left in the fourth quarter of the game. So if they can't score on any of these other teams, I don't know how they're going to put points up against OSU. Uh, I really genuinely don't see Michigan State being able to make this game close. They may force Ohio State into some field goals versus touchdowns, but at the end of the day, Michigan State getting into double figures and points would be a surprise to me. I, I just, I mean, maybe maybe 10 or 13, that's all the more you can really see them scoring. And there's no way they hold on Ohio State under 30. I just don't see that happening. And the way Ohio State's been playing – They've set a modern record for winning, what, four straight games by 40-plus points? It wouldn't surprise me to see that streak continue. 
remember, it was not that long ago when Ohio State played Michigan State, and they beat them, what, 45-7 to a couple years ago? Was it right after the Iowa game? So I, I, I don't think Michigan State is very good this year, is my blunt assessment of them. And I think Ohio State is really good this year. So unless that whole paying attention to their press clippings comes into play that you were just talking about, Dave, which is a continuous concern. Uh, they've only seen them play. We still haven't seen them play a full 60 minutes because Nebraska was 45 minutes, which was the longest that it felt like they kept the starters in the whole year. But if this team comes out and continues to play at the level we've seen, Michigan State has no prayer. They are not in Ohio State's class. Uh, They're very similar to that Indiana team that Ohio State bludgeoned in Indiana a couple weeks ago. So, no, I don't see Michigan State having a chance if Ohio State plays the way that they have so far this season. I'm with you. If Ohio State plays the way they have so far this season, everybody in college football is in trouble. I mean, they look like a juggernaut. If they can just keep this level of play, they are going to be extremely difficult to beat. And I'm including teams like Alabama and Clemson and anybody else you can think of. They, are, they look that good, the Buckeyes do. Uh, and it, it would be a good time for them to put on a show this weekend against Michigan State because it's going to be a huge recruiting weekend, of course, backs. I want to focus on three 2020 prospects in particular that will be on campus this weekend. Running back Trey Bradford will be on, on his official visit. Defensive end Tyler Barron, official visit. Quarterback C.J. Stroud, unofficial visit. I think all three of those guys are, would be huge gets. Let's start with Trey Bradford, um, young man out of Texas, number 18 running back in the country, uh, number 224. Overall player in the country, four-star running back. I mean, they, they, obviously they need running backs more than anything else in this class. It'd be huge to get uh, Trey Bradford to say the least backs. Yeah. It's a position of bad need after Ohio State was this close to hitting the grand slam at the tailback position. I think it's going to be interesting because I do think OSU would take him right now on his visit. And the bigger question is, would that lock up the running back position in this class? And I, I don't believe so. I think they're still looking for two guys like they were before when B. John Robinson and Jalen Knighton were the two that they were hoping to get in. Uh, I'm interested to see how this all shakes out because they have like five or six running backs with, quote, committable offers around the country right now. You've got Mayan Williams. You've got Gibbs down in Georgia. You've got a, a group of guys right now. So I, I think it would be a very big deal for Ohio State to get Bradford. He's still a very good prospect. This It's not like they're, he's some random two-star kid that they decided to try to plug in. He's a big kid. He's the top, what, 150 player, I believe, nationally? So that's a we big get for if they can get him. Yeah, for, what the, do you, what is the, the composite has him as, as 224. I'm going to look up what 24-7 has him as 159, I think, yeah. So according to 24-7 sports okay. in-house rankings, 159 in the country, number 14 running back in the country. According to the composites, yeah. um, he is number 224 in the country. So, yeah, he, he's really good. He's not a bum. Um, That's the point. This, no, this kid's no, a good player. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be so good if they could get him. And Mayan Williams, would yeah. that would be a good class right there for running backs. Yeah. I mean, that, let's, let's be honest here, guys. I know there's a lot of people whose baseline was – the number one running back in the country and the number one all-purpose back in the country. And anything less is an utter failure. Fire Alford, right? But at the end of the day, like, this is still a really good tailback. And if you're a top 15 player at your position, generally that means you've got an excellent chance to be an excellent college football player. I mean, that's – I know we all look at these, like, recruiting rankings like they're, they're, they're gospel and – that is exactly how they're going to pan out, no question about it. Number one is number one, right? But the truth is, uh, this kid may, may be the 14th rated tailback, and by the time he gets on the field in two years at OSU, he may be playing like the number five tailback. I mean, when Zeke Elliott committed to OSU, Zeke was barely a top ten national tailback, and then he moved up in the rankings as people saw what they had. Zeke was a three-star when he committed to OSU, and then he ended up moving up because everybody saw how good Zeke was. So right now, Getting Bradford's a good get at a position where they need a good tailback. So to me, that would be, that'd be the biggest get they can get out of this weekend. Uh, the other guys are very interesting, and bringing Stroud on campus is quite intriguing because it means they're officially probably going forward with the two quarterbacks in this class. I, I guess Jack Miller apparently is finally on board with some competition. Um, but in the end, it would be a nice weekend for OSU on a national bet platform with some big recruits on campus to go out and deck the Spartans. 
Absolutely, and I like C.J. Stroud a lot. Yeah, I'm glad you, you mentioned him. That's going to be interesting to see what happens. He's going to be on his unofficial visit, as I, I mentioned earlier. He's a young man from Rancho Cucamonga, California. I love that name, Rancho Cucamonga. He's the number seven pro-style quarterback in the country, according to the composite number 192, regardless of position. So he keeps moving up the rankings. He's a four-star kid. I think uh, early in the process he was three-star. I really like C.J. Stroud. And then the one other uh, young man I want you to comment on, Tyler Barron, number three defensive end in the country, number 105 overall, a uh, high four-star kid out of Knoxville, Tennessee, right there in Tennessee's backyard, but the Vols are just, they look so bad that, you know, and 100% of the crystal balls right now have Tyler Barron going to Tennessee, but he's going to be on an official visit this weekend, and if there's any time that Ohio State can steal a, a player right from Tennessee's backyard, I would think it would be right now. Yeah, why would you go to Tennessee if you're an elite player? Like, that's, a, that's, that's not me just being snarky, that's a genuine question. Why would you choose to go to a program that can't beat Georgia State at home and appears to have a coach who doesn't know what he's doing and the the fans are utterly toxic? Like, unless you grew up bleeding ball, the truth is this doesn't make sense if you're a kid who can go anywhere to go to Tennessee. It's kind of like when Von Bell came to Ohio State. Like, Tennessee was a big influence, right? But Tennessee stunk at the time, and not much has changed. The, the truth is is that there, it's like it's like it, if Ohio State was just completely terrible, would elite kids in Ohio, would they all still be so sure to go to OSU? The answer to that is no. We, we, we'd like to think the answer is yes. We'd like to think that people in this state grow up Buckeyes and want to be Buckeyes. But the truth is, if you're a top 100 kid, your thought process is largely going to be based around I want to get to the NFL, and how am I going to get there? And Tennessee's not the path right now. They, they, they ask, can I win football games while I'm in college? And the answer is Tennessee can't even win five games a year right now. So I, don't, I know it's 100% of crystal balls to Tennessee, but if he's visiting OSU, it means he's not 100% set on going to a crappy mid-level SEC program. And that's a good sign for OSU because, again, when you're talking about getting the number three guy in the country at his position – that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. And it kind of shows you how the recruiting under Ryan Day really isn't letting off. That's a, that's a big-time prospect who Ohio State's bringing up right now. So, yeah, I, I think that you're, you're talking I mean, – what did we just mention? We mentioned the number 14 running back, the number 7 quarterback, and the number 3 defensive end. That's a pretty good midseason visit list. No doubt about it. It's almost like they recruit well over there or something. Um, last thing uh, – Jeff Hasley, I would love for him to stay at Ohio State uh, forever. Uh, that's not going to happen. He has future head coach written all over, him, and I mean like power, a good Power Five, you know, conference team, not like future MAC head coach. Like Jeff Hasley, in my opinion, if he stays for one more year and then leaves after the 2020 season, I'll be thrilled. I do not see him staying for more than two years. I was curious to ask Ryan Day yesterday about this, uh, and I did. If he does the same thing that Urban did, Urban would ask his assistance, as you know, backs for a two-year commitment. And it would be nothing that would be like written into their contract, but it would be like a gentleman's agreement. Like, hey, I'm going to hire you, but you're, I need you to stay for two years. Like, And obviously if someone was like, you know, offered the Pittsburgh Steelers head coaching job, maybe they would take it. Um, you know, after a year being the assistant coach at Ohio State. Sorry, Mike Tomlin, I'm being a little facetious there. Um, but, you know, Ryan Day did not say that he asked his guys for a two-year commitment, but he also said, you know, he wants them to stay for more than one year, and they talk about that and the importance of that with re- building relationships with recruiting and the current team and all that. Um, and he he finished it up with a pretty, you know, I, I thought it was a pretty forceful statement that he doesn't think they're going to lose anybody after this year. He thinks that his current staff is going to stick around for a while. What did you make of those comments, and how long do you think Jeff Hathley is legitimately going to stay at Ohio State? Well, the first thing I made of those comments was, is what else is Ryan Day supposed to say, right? He can't be like, yeah, half's awesome, man. That some NFL team's going to hire him in, like, December, you know? Like, of course he has to say that because recruits are flocking to Halfley. Halfley's certainly become a big-time recruiter for OSU almost overnight. Uh, I think the bigger question for Halfley is what does he want to do? Does he want to be an NFL guy or does he want to be a college guy? Cause he spent most of his career prior to this in the National Football League. So I think that for Ohio State, if you get him for two years – you consider yourself very fortunate. He's the kind of coach where if OSU has two straight big years, which it seems like they're very much primed to do, he's the kind of guy if 
some of these other big time jobs open up, he's not going to go to Rutgers. Let's put it that way. Like when when Rutgers just fired poor Chris Ash, one of the names that was on their their articles was, well, Jeff Halfley's a New Jersey native. No way. He wouldn't take that job. That's the blunt answer. And by the way, Greg Schiano is the only candidate for that job, if you ask me. But if Halfley has a, two straight years here, like uh, we we hope, then he's the kind of guy who's going to get big time programs calling him. He's the kind of guy who's not going to go to an Indiana or some other program like that. And let's face it, uh, if somehow Clay Helton holds on to his job for the rest of this year, because it seems like Urban Meyer won't be going, which Urban Meyer won't be going, I'm just keep I keep saying this. There's no way Urban Meyer's coaching next year. I just don't see it. Uh, the truth is. Halfley's been out west a bunch before, and if he has two straight good years at OSU, he may be a guy who's the top of USC's list next year if Clay Helton can hold on another year. So, end of the day, I think that you have Halfley as a guy who, if OSU gets two years out of him, would consider it very fortunate because he's clearly a rising star. But in the end, that's kind of isn't that what you want out of your assistant coaches? Like, remember the Trestle era where we were always complaining about, like, man, I can't believe Jim Bowman's still here. Why do these other programs always have guys who are pulling head coaches out? We haven't had a head coach come out of this program since D'Antonio, right? Urban kept sending head coaches left and right because it means he had awesome coaches and recruiters. That's what you need to sustain an elite level. And there's a certain level of turnover you have to expect at OSU. So, you know, my opinion is, you know how you mitigate any concerns about Halfley leaving? You call Chris up, you offer him a job as a, quote, analyst, where he's essentially a coach but not really and doesn't have to recruit for a year, but he can still be heavily involved in football and just tell him, look, Halfley's going to go get a legit job somewhere. Whenever he's gone, you're my new defensive coordinator again, right? And then his family can stay here for a little bit longer, so Ash doesn't have to move his family around as much. Because let's face it, I don't know if Ash is going to want to be a head coach again after the Rutgers disaster or if anybody's going to choose to hire him. So if you can convince Chris Ash to come back to Columbus as an analyst to – hopefully step into the role that's currently filled by Halfley and or Madison in a year or two down the line while he's getting paid his big records buyout, then you have yourself set up for the future. So that's your succession plan right there if you're Ryan Day. And don't put it past him, by the way, because Ryan Day pulled a couple things off of coaching hires last offseason that most of us didn't think was going to happen. Like, I don't know, stealing two of the best coaches on Michigan staff. So there's, there's a little bit of a crystal ball for you. I think Chris Ash is going to come back to Ohio State in some – not quite official coaching capacity next year, and he's the coordinator after Halfley. I love it. Great insights, as always, from the people's champ. He comes strong every time. I really appreciate it, Bax, and thank you to all the listeners out there for tuning into the show. I appreciate that as well. I hope everyone has a great day. Let's hear the Buckeye swag. Best damn band in the land. Mm-hmm.